Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about how to do screening in child and adolescent psychiatry. I'm Dr. Suresh Padmanabh, professor of psychiatry at the Telemedicine Center working at Nimans Bangalore. Let's discuss how to do screening in child and adolescent psychiatry. Before we start that, let's understand there are different types of assessment we do on outpatient basis. One is screening which takes 10 to 20 minutes. detailed evaluation 30 to 45 minutes and follow up 5 to 10 minutes please do remember the time taken depends upon the client and the family members how well they are prepared and how well they are cognitively well equipped to give the information and at the same time the professional discretion and also experience of the psychiatrist also makes a difference in the time taken at the same time taking information from the child and adolescent is very difficult we need to collect information from multiple sources family members that is parents maybe grandfather grandmother relatives friends school so various agencies may refer the case may refer the patient so those referral letters also give good information at the same time you may have to get the observation report maybe from the ward or else even if the patient is waiting in the interview room there also you can observe the child and further mental status examination of the child along with if you are able to get a school observation report and if the child is going to tuition please do ask the tuition teacher to give various information with regard to the attention concentration academic performance and developmental performance can be easily collated let's understand why the information domains is very essential to know please do remember the child behaves differently in different situation not only that the child's behavior or the adolescent's behavior is not only the behavior is a manifestation of its as a behavior it is also a underlying thought problem or else emotional problems or else the environmental problems even the developmental challenge what the child is facing can be the presence so we have to know under what context the child is behaving with this symptom it may be whether it is within the home family context only that is from the home context or else the child has the symptoms only in the school context or else is it in the social situation we should know and to find out whether the symptoms presented is it in the only one domain or else in all the three domains please do remember the externalizing patients usually will have symptoms across all domains it will be at home it will be at school and also in the social situation whereas the internalizing problem will be seen only at home many a time it may not be seen in school and social situation invariably in social situation and school situation the most of the time they will be told they are highly shy and they do not open their mouth but please do remember the developmental problems also has a problem across all the domains so we need to know under what circumstances the symptoms are present there may be the symptoms may be present only in the family context where there is a family discord is very high the domestic violence substance abuse in the parents can produce symptoms only in the home domain but however the children may be doing very well in the school and social situation sometimes the symptoms may be seen in only in school situation because of bullying in the school hence we have to know where the symptoms started and where they are manifestation and what are the reasons it is maintaining in that situation these are the three important domains we should need to assess but however after the pandemic has a fourth dimension has taken place that is social media how the child is expressing his thoughts motion in the social media we have found recently there are many children reporting about their distress emotional problems parental problems on social media with strangers or with peers and that may be one of the gold mine to get the information but however you need to balance between confidentiality privacy of the child versus the dangerousness of the child so these are the four domains we have to assess where the symptoms manifestation is occurring please do remember 
the screening in child and adolescent psychiatry is a short period and it is the first time the child is or the adolescent is presented to the psychiatrist. Let's understand what is the objective of the screening. First and the foremost, it's a screening. The first time you are seeing to know whether the child requires IP care or else the child's safety is a big question. Somebody is abusing the child. The child needs to be protected immediately. Is there any organicity issue or else any serious life-threatening issues are there? Planning investigation, assessments, making a provisional diagnosis and also quickly deciding whether the child requires to start a medication, stop a medication or titrate the medication and also planning for a future a good detailed evaluation time and this screening is done on OPD basis. When you are doing screening, your interview room should be appropriate to the child and the adolescent. The interview room should not, room should not be intimidating to the child and adolescent. Invariably, they have to come and sit and wait for you for your interview or the assessment. Many a time, the child and adolescents become irritated, frustrated because of the waiting time. So, the interview room should be child friendly. Hence, it should be bright colored and also there should be space for the children to move around. Don't expect a child or an adolescent to sit for 30 to 40 minutes waiting for the assessment. They invariably become restless. Hence, the room should be child friendly. At the same time, it also should have various play materials like toys, stuffed toys, puppets, maybe emoticon toys, cards. These emoticon toys or cards will help us, especially in the children in the age of 7 to 10 years or maybe till the 14 years, what are their emotions? These emotion cards or emoticons cards are very helpful because it is now present in digital media everywhere. They know when to put those emoticons feeling sad, frustrated or else laughing. Those emotions can be easily expressed. At the same time, the interview room or the waiting room also should have paper, pencil, sketch, crayons, maybe clay, board games, drawing sheets. And also alphabets or various other things should be there, results, even whatever which can engage the child during the waiting period is very essential. At the same time, please do make sure those toys are gender representative. Maybe you may have to have certain cooking kind of uh, toys like maybe stove, maybe vessels, small vessels where a female child may be able to engage in this, those kinds of activity. Hence, please do remember engaging the child during the waiting period is very very essential. And who are those people who can do the screening? It can be undergraduate, postgraduate, primary care doctors, nurses, psychologist, psychiatric social worker or a social worker or family members who have to know about what is this assessment and this video is meant for all of this. But please do remember before we interact with the child or the family members, adequate training is required. So this video is basically for that purpose only. Here I am mentioning because family members, because if the family members are going to meet a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a nurse, they should know what a professional is going to expect and what they have to be ready with the information. Please do remember when you are doing assessment, you need to know there are three, four important points you have to remember. First and the foremost, please do classify whether the child has any organicity or a developmental problem. If the child has organicity, maybe epilepsy, that is seizures, maybe high fever, disoriented, substance abuse, intoxicated, poisoning, or else the child has various other developmental issues to be picked up very fast immediately. That is the important objective of the screening. At the same time, Look for what are the environmental problems within the family or for the school or whether there is a trauma. The child is being abused physically, maybe sexually. You have to immediately check and at the same time, look for any temperamental issues or attachment related issues. So these are the four categories roughly you have to assess. Let's discuss about the screening in child and adolescent psychiatry. 
there are nine different domains where we have to do the assessment in screening. First and the foremost is demographic details or identification data, chief complaints and brief history, family history, personal history, temperamental history, past history, child interview and observation that is basically mental status examination, tasks given to the child and provisional diagnosis. These are the various nine important domains you have to do screening quickly. The time is very limited here. Let's look at the demographic details or identification data. First and the foremost is name and let's have the name what it has been registered. Many a time the family may register with the pet name or a common name which is used at the home. But when a certificate is required, you may have to have a proper name which is registered in the school. So name, ID, if you are able to have a photo ID, tomorrow you can do telemedicine. Hence, that's very essential. Date of birth to know the age, gender, schooling is to document from when the formal education started. At the same time, occupation. It is slightly difficult to understand why the occupation is here. Still, in our country, we do have child labor. Many a time, at the age of 14 or 15, the child may start going to school at the same time, evening, it may be working as a daily wage laborer or else helping the dad in his business. Hence, you may have to document whether the child is able to perform in certain occupational function socioeconomic status of the family, address and mobile number. These are the basic identification data you should check. Important is now gathering information. As much as possible, collect information from multiple resources such as parents, brothers and sisters, friends, school and also many times the referral agency may give you information. And sometimes the information collected may be different from one source to another. The father may give a different history and the mother may give a different history. Of course, the child may behave differently in front of the father and may be quiet and very affectionate with the mother. Hence, there may be difference in the behavior in different setting. So, it is very important to collect the information from multiple sources to have an accurate diagnosis. If you have less information, your diagnosis will be also be less accurate. Please do use various methodology to collect information. Maybe mobile call, maybe phone call to the father or the grandfather who is at home to collect information. Or else, even you can make a call to the school teacher to ask and also the tuition teacher to ask how the child is doing. Hence, Please do collect information. At the same time, please don't forget nowadays the children are expressing in social media, especially adolescent. If you are able to get information even from the social media, what kind of postings the child is doing, what they are typing will be a valuable source of inform information. But please do remember, you have to balance between the autonomy and the problem with the pathology of the child. And also, please do document whether the information you are collected is reliable and adequate. Let's move into the chief complaints and brief history. In the chief complaints, please do document on chronological order what symptoms started. Many a time, the family members will be able to talk about the behavior which are in excess. If you slowly ask certain questions or keenly you ask questions, there may be withdrawn behavior or deficit behaviors may be there. Please do document that, ask for them. Start with the chronological order and the duration. And when you document this, don't use technical terms. Use whatever the family members have said. If the child has said something or the adolescent has said, please do document. At the same time, the mother and father have given a different symptom, please do document at the same time. When they give this symptom profile, please ask for what is the reason for consultation. Who referred them? Why they referred? What was the symptom? What was the need for referral? Why the referral now? That question should be clearly asked. Whether the family came on their own, who initiated the consultation? Many a time, parents may not like to visit mental health professionals. Please do remember, if you have to take your child to any mental health professional, 
will be very difficult to take to a mental health professional because it's stigma. At the same time, to seek a mental health professional is very disheartening. That means they would have been approaching the mental health professional, maybe a last resort. Even many people would have told them. But still, the help seeking behavior is very less in our population. So, reason for referral should be documented. And also, history of presenting illness should be very brief because the time is very short. Chronological order describe each symptoms, whether it is at home, school, or in the social situation. Quantify and qualify the symptom, like duration, context, frequency, what are the increasing factor or precipitating factor, relieving factor, aggravating factor, progression of the symptoms and outcome of the symptoms. Please do document all of these for each one of the symptoms. At the same time, inquire the essentially important points, whether the child is harmful to others or to self, that is basically suicidal or deliberate self-harm. Or else, is he hurting his other brothers or any other uh, friends at the school? And sometimes you may ask to the child directly whether you are suicidal, whether you are planning to end your life, whether you have death wishes. A direct questioning is very helpful. Earlier, it was thought that not to ask such questions. But the research have proved that asking the adolescent or the young children or the slightly the 8 or 10 years directly do get a valuable information associated function like biological function sleep appetite hygiene ball blood habits social functioning school functioning or college functioning regularity is there any leave tension and concentration academic performance whether it is decreasing whether it has declined radically social functioning what is the pro is there the child how it is performing on social media interaction with friends relatives neighbors and if possible explain a typical day check for any legal or financial issues with the child or the family members moving to the third domain that is family history please do remember child is the middle of the family functioning and under what context and under the what environment the child is manifesting these symptoms has to be studied properly at the same time, when you take a family history, this is an opportunity to understand the family and also to build a rapport with the family and to know who are the decision maker and how the child has child rearing practice is going on. So hence, the three generation genogram is very essential. Check for any consanguinity, type of family. At the same time, is there any family history of medical or else psychiatric illness? And three generation Genogram is very essential. The first generation is basically the child. The index child is here is a 12 year child, female child, and the male child is represented by the square. Parents become the second generation. The third generation is grandparents. Moving further, please do ask for each person's age, education, occupation, health status. And also ask for who is the major or who major person who is spending time with the child, the index child. And also, ask for any safety issue of the child. Or else, if the child is abused within the family, it has to be checked. Moving to the personal history. The personal history of the child should start from the prenatal. Whether the pregnancy was planned, whether the immunization of the mother occurred, how the pregnancy went on, perinatal care, mid death was there the child delivery was normal, was there a cesarean, did the child cry immediately, and postnatal, was there any illness, frequent fever, respiratory infection, those are the issues need to be covered, whether the immunization of the child was done or not, and also, Ask for milestones. Milestones, whether it is age appropriate, delayed, or whether there is a global delay, has to be checked here. But however, the time being very short, you can ask the parents to compare with the other children, maybe his brother or sister, did he walk, did he speak at the right time, or was it a delay? And also check for self help skills, such as 
current toilet training, brushing, bathing, dressing, eating, whether the child has attained this self reliant or not has to be checked. Moving to the schooling history, at what time, at what age the schooling was started? Was there any difficulty in adjustment? Was there any school refusal? Was there any change of school and how did the child adapt to the change of school or even change of place from one place to another place if the parents are shifting because of transfer how did the child adapt to the new situation is there any truancy academic performance whether it was increasing decreasing or status was there any trauma how the family is dealing with him especially punishment maybe by teachers or even bullying by the peers at the school also manifests certain symptoms. And also was there any fear of exam? That has to be checked. Moving to the temperamental history. Here you have to check, check for activity levels. Whether the activity level is increased, decreased, attention and concentration, what is the attention span, social, whether he is friendly or not, and also whether he is sensitive to criticism or easygoing, or also whether he is moody and also shy, fearful or anxious to certain places, stubborn, excessive temper tantrums, destructive and what are the types of attachment. And I am going to do a detailed video on how to do the temper, how to take a temperamental history. But however, when you are doing for the screening, it has to be very brief. Moving to the past and medical history, is there any medical illness, chronic medical illness? or any recurrent infection, epilepsy, hearing or visual, di visual difficulties in the child or whether the child is on any medication, that has to be checked. Moving whether to the past history of any psychiatric illness, any episodes were there in the past, was there any medication given, response to treatment, side effects to treatment, was there any psychosocial intervention was tried in the past. Moving to the child interview and observation, that is basically mental status examination, along with general physical examination. The child has to undergo general physical examination for the vitals, at the same time height and weight for BMI, head circumferences. At the, at the same time, you also ask for vision or hearing problem that may represent as academic decline. At the same time, any minor physical anomalies and also any physical abuse sign has to be checked. If you are looking for any hereditary or genetic abnormality and you want to do any genital examination, Please do take parents consent and when you are examining one of the parents should be accompanied with the child. In the absence of the parents never ever do any kind of physical examination or genital examination. And for psychologist and social worker never attempt general physical examination. You may end up in a legal problem. Coming to the mental status examination, look for the general appearance and behavior the psychomotor activity of the child, rapport is built or not, how, what is the speech, thought process of the child, mood of the child, perception and other any other phenomena is there. At the same time grossly check for cognitive functions, basically orientation, attention and concentration, memory, judgment and also the insight. Many a time the child, the younger child may not be able to give the chronological order of the memory. When was well, last week or one month back or the year, they may not be able to tell. But however, if they are able to give a good information about the school, that means you are able to capture the recent and also the remote memory. Coming to the task given to the child, when you are engaging the parents to ask information, you may give certain tasks to the child, like drawing at will, give them the give the child a pen, pencil and ask them to draw whatever they want. Even you can ask them to draw a person. And also if you may give writing or a calculation can be given to know the intellectual development. At the same time, play assessment if you are done and if you observe the child playing around and if you are able to make a note whether the child was hyperactive or whether the child was clinging to the parents that has to be noted here. And at the same time, this is one of the important three wish test has to be given. You can ask the child directly if you could make three wishes, any three wish in the whole world, what would be they? And ask them what are those wishes, whether it is a material, 
whether they want to see any change in the environment, especially in the family, in the school, is there any problem in the peer or else any abuse is happening, that window of opportunity is given to know the emotional status of the child. Hence, three wish test is a very important step. Please don't miss this. Coming to the last, to make a provisional diagnosis, if possible, here you have a multi axial diagnosis and this should be a provisional diagnosis. Access 1 being a clinical disorder. Access 2 is a developmental disorder like SLD, speech disorder. Those are the things. The access 3 is intellectual functioning or the level. The access 4 is medical disorder. And access 5 is psychosocial issues. And invariably access 6 sometimes is taken for the global disability. Basically the, the disabled, psychosocial disability of the child is coded under access 6. But however, access 5 is more than enough. And coming to the final part of the diagnosis, please do make a provisional diagnosis. At the same time, if you are unable to come to any provisional diagnosis, go for a differential diagnosis. And if you are able to get a diagnosis, maybe a confirmation, confirmed diagnosis you can make. But however, if you are unable to reach to any diagnosis, you can mention clearly telling that I am unable to come to any conclusion because of the paucity of the time or a important reliable informant is not available. And plan for the management maybe ask for any asking for any investigations school and teachers report any video recording if the child is having dissociative attacks or a episodes of behaviors which is difficult to explain by the children and you are unable to understand ask the family to do a video recording nowadays the smartphones are available they will be able to record if the child is having syncopal attacks that can be recorded if the child has epileptic seizures that can be recorded if you want to ask for any psychological test, get that can be requested before the detailed evaluation. You can ask for a diary. That means the symptoms, when did they come and how often they do occur, under what context they occur, that is basically antecedent behavior and consequence of the behavior. Those can be explained to the family. The parents can document that. And giving the detailed evaluation date. And if you want to start medication, if you are clear about the diagnosis, that can be started. But however, if the child requires a referral, maybe ENT, if the child is hard of hearing, if the child has difficulty in looking at the blackboard or the monitor, that means you may have to get an ophthalmology opinion. If the child has any neurological illness, you may have to get a neurological opinion. So this is how we do the screening. Although the screening is very short, many a time it may take long time, but please do remember Screening is basically to know whether the child has any organic problem or else a medical illness which requires immediate attention, whether the child requires IP care, whether the child has any safety issues, those need to be decided. And rest is basically for detailed evaluation, planning for any assessments to be done. Thank you for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.